The train is an unstoppable force in GTA 5. But what if I told you it can be stopped without the use of mods, glitches, or hacks? Well, today we uncover all of the most random, useless, never before questioned, wildest mysteries and facts about the trains in GTA 5. Answering questions like, how far does the train travel? How many train crossings are there? And how fast is the train? As well as so much more. To start, there are four train models in the game. Obviously, the most well known is the freight train, which travels all the way around the map. City dwellers know that the tram circles the city's underside, but the cable car in Polito Bay can be considered a train under some definitions, so it'll be included for the sake of this video. Lastly, though many people probably never noticed it, the Chop Shop DLC introduced an alternative version of the freight train, with minor differences such as the extra ladder and the train entrance animation. Now you may know a lot about trains, but do you know how much the trains weigh in GTA 5? Well, the tram is the lightest at 25,000 kilograms or 55,000 pounds, which is still quite heavy. And despite having a vertical gain of almost 800 meters, the cable car dangles 25,084 kilograms above the mountainside, which is honestly quite impressive. I think. I don't really know what something like this is supposed to weigh. As for the freight train, it also weighs 25,084 kilograms, which is 54,000 pounds. But so does every single version of the train car. And given the fact that each train spawns with an average of 8 cars as well as the locomotive, that adds up to... 225,756 kilograms, or 497,000 pounds, which is equal to about 283 pandas. Now there are plenty of places where the freight train has to travel over roads, under highways, or over rivers and creeks. The freight train actually manages to cross 35 bridges in its entire loop, the tallest being the Rattan Canyon Bridge, and the longest being the one in Grapeseed, while the tram only crosses three bridges in its loop. There are also two other bridges which are on decommissioned sections of the track, but these bridges do still stand. But what about tunnels? Well, there are 11 train tunnels in the entire map, and I think it'd be nice if we knew which one was the best. Which means, it's time for a ranking! To the green screen! To start, the worst tunnel is one of the decommissioned tunnels, which is under El Rancho Boulevard. It's just bland, short, and unused. The same can be said for the other tunnel on this disabled section of track, which goes under Poplar Street. At least this one may still get some use as it's still connected to the main track. In ninth place, we have the Sandy Shores Tunnel, which is a bit longer, but was kind of unnecessary as there were other ways that this track could have gone, which made building the tunnel completely unnecessary. Moving to the tram, it has a small loop which utilizes tunnels to turn around before the sewage canals, but this is fairly unuseful to players and is only a decent length. Just a tad north is the Sewage Descent Tunnel, which only gets this high because players use it occasionally to cross the area. Other than that, it's just plain boring. Taking 7th is one train system we haven't even talked about yet, and it's the Mineshaft, which is very long but also decommissioned, and aside from early on, doesn't have any major use in GTA 5, but its aesthetic is great. The next tunnel is located under Mirror Park, and it's the City Entrance Tunnel which is very needed as there's no other way to work around it, and it's a decent way to get from the city to the highway without being griefed by other players. In the top five is the tram airport loop, which is a very long and good way to lose the cops, but there's only one entrance and exit unless you're on foot or have a motorbike. Being the longest of the freight train tunnels is fourth, which goes under Poplar Street, from the sewage canals to the docks and has a few entrances. It's again a great place for you to get from wherever you're going to the docks and lose the cops or avoid griefers while you're at it. In second and third are the Rat and Canyon Tunnels, both being the fastest way to get from the middle of the map to Polito Bay, and having no other easy way for the train to go, these were a complete necessity. Though Rat and Canyon North gets second because it's longer in length. The best tunnel by far is the main tram underground section, as it's extremely long and has numerous entrances even for cars, and it's a great place to hide from players and lose the cops while getting to your destination. And if you learn these tunnels, they can really make business sales a lot easier. Which means it's time to get back to the chair. Now, you may notice that I didn't mention a single underpass, and that's because I don't believe that we can count them as full tunnels. But we can't go without mentioning them. So there are 26 underpasses where the train passes under a section of suspended road or highway. Eight of these are on the active freight train loop, Four of them are on the tram loop, and 14 others are decommissioned and deactivated. 
However, going over or under roadways is not the only way of crossing paths, and that's where train crossings come into play. And there are surprisingly 36 of them. Now normally for the sake of time, I wouldn't bother ranking these, but it was specifically requested by this user. And this user asked for longer videos. So I ranked them on their aesthetic, how much NPC and player traffic they get, as well as if it has a crossing arm or not. Which means, back to the green screen! Yeah, really. To start, this small crossing only gives access to a small trailer park, and most people just drive over the hills to get there. This is rarely ever used. Sandy Shores has a lot of useless train crossings, and this one is just the worst, and I'll leave it at that. Near this newer freeway is a small train side channel, and it has this boring layout and is never used by anyone. The docks have a few crossings, but this one is the first to have some sort of warning signal. However, it doesn't really work, and the only people going here are people who work here who have to park in this kind of shitty parking lot. Sandy Shores Returns, being very similar to the last one. Place Place is a crossing I almost missed doing this count. It really blends in and only has a warning sign on one side of the track, which is not very safe. Quick detour back to Sandy Shores for another bog standard crossing. And again, back down to Place Place, where this crossing is on the same road, but on an inactive section of the track. The Palmer Taylor Power Station has two train crossings, one active and one inactive. Both score very similarly as they are almost identical to each other. Down at the docks is Signal Street, which again, just a boring train crossing. If you try driving through the Chainski Passage, you'll be met with this little train crossing. Buccaneer Way takes us back to the docks and has ample warning, but you do cross a lot of tracks here. Now the largest area of decommissioned tracks has nine crossings in total, and the worst just goes across the center of Orchardville Ave. Little Bighorn Ave has a small crossing right next to an active train tunnel. Now since this video is already looking longer than normal, let's just rapid fire some of these without reason. South Shambles Street South is decommissioned, Orchardville returns with Orchardville South, back to South Shambles for North, 21st place, Orchardville South is next, Drydock Street is the same decommissioned area as the others, Innocence Boulevard is a bit more unique and would have seen a lot more traffic if it was still in use. Slowing back down, we have our worst train crossing, which is on Forum Drive, and has basic and unclear warnings. El Rancho Boulevard is a very busy street, and it's probably a good thing that this crossing has been decommissioned. The Union Crossing takes us back out of the city and has good warnings considering it's an inactive crossing. In 14th through 12th, there are three different tram crossings, the Mission Road Crossing, which is easy to miss due to its location on the Olympic Freeway. Brogue Avenue is down in South Los Santos, but gets beaten out by Davis Avenue, which is just up the road and gets a bit more traffic. Heading back to El Rancho Boulevard, this is the best decommissioned crossing, and it's a good thing as this road is busy and the nearby nightclub would not have very good business if there was an active train passing by here. Moving to the top 10 is the main Sandy Shores Crossing, which is properly labeled and has a good amount of traffic for the area. Ninth goes to the best inactive line and is located on Capitol Boulevard, which is the main road in and out of the city. Eighth takes us back to the docks with this very open concept crossing. Strawberry Ave Tram Crossing is decent, but just loses the best tram crossing to Innocence Boulevard, which is a bit confusing when you look at it, but it's just a multi-road point, so the traffic here is kind of atrocious. The top five train crossings are all located in the same straight, with full-on crossing arms and good amounts of traffic. The worst of the five is on McDonald Street because the crossing arms actively have a major delay. Like, they didn't even go down this time. What's with that? Covenant Ave sees the least traffic of these, Well, Carson Ave is one of the few points where the tram and train kind of cross paths. Almost. In a close second is Dutch London Street, as it also sees a lot of traffic, but it just didn't quite do as well as First Place, which belongs to Innocence Boulevard, as it sees a lot of traffic and is another main road between the city and the industrial area. Coming back to the chair, although there is only four types of trains, there is over 280 train cars across the entire map, and they're located in odd places, like in the desert, scrapyards, oil sands, and various other places. However, most of them are located in one of the eight loading docks. From the decommissioned area in East Los Santos, to the docks in Elysian Island, alongside the Mirror Park Rail Yard. And on the north side of the map, we have the Palmer Taylor Sidetrack, the Quarry Loading Dock, the Union Grain Loading Bay, and the Cluck and Bell Train Yard in Toledo Bay. However, there is one train that stands out from the rest, and most people never even notice it's there. Or if you do, you never notice it was a train car. And it's the last train in Los Santos, Diner, which is located on Eclipse Boulevard. 
which is an old vintage passenger train turned diner. And although it doesn't have an interior, it's still pretty cool. And you know what this means? It's ranking time! And on the chopping block this time are all the tram stations, to which there are 11. The worst tram station almost doesn't even count because it's not even open. Good location for when it does open though. 10th belongs to Little Soul. It's just your average underground tram station to be honest. Burton is next, and unfortunately there's nowhere to park near here if you drove to the station. And it's severely inaccessible. I mean underground, there's an elevator. But above ground, that's where the road is. So I don't know where that elevator goes. Portal of Drive fixes the parking problem, but again, doesn't have an elevator above ground, only underground, which is actually the case for every single underground tram station. Del Perro works as a great place to get to transit or underground from the Maze Bank West office, and is majorly underused by players. However, from above ground, this just looks like a staircase. What tells you this is a tram station? Moving above ground, Puerto del Sol is more accessible, but still takes ages to get there via wheelchair, and there's no parking nearby. Pillbox South is very central to the city, making it ideal for those working downtown. However, it also lacks a fair amount of parking nearby. So I actually completely forgot about the Davis station in my script. Um, it, it's here. It exists. LSIA actually has two stations, and many forget about the LSIA parking station, which allows patrons to get from their terminal directly to their vehicle where they parked. LSIA Terminal 4 station is pretty clean, although you can't see where the elevator comes up. Maybe for this one we can assume it comes up in the terminal, but that's just a maybe. And the best station in GTA 5 is the Strawberry location, being right above a major bus terminal and along a major freeway. Close to downtown, this makes transit extremely easy, and it even has an escalator. As well as, believe it or not, an elevator that actually takes you from the ground to the station. How hard was that? The freight train travels around the entire map, but what distance does it actually travel? Well, after some tedious testing, I found that the freight train loop is 29.7 miles or 47.8 kilometers long. Though, if you add all of the inactive or decommissioned tracks together, you'll find that Rockstar has decided to add 25.24 miles or 40.62 kilometers of useless track to the map. But what about the tram? Well, its loop is a collective 19.22 miles or 30.93 kilometers. And if we want to know the total length of all the track in GTA 5, we need to add the half a mile of the mine shafts underground and the 14.6 or 23 and a half kilometers of track in North Yankton. Taking all that into account, it adds up to a total of 89.31 miles or 143.73 kilometers. And the cable car, if anyone was wondering, travels 1.43 miles or 2.3 kilometers. Now, knowing these distances, we can easily find out the average speed of each train. But first, we need to know how long the train takes to do its loop. The cable car takes 2 minutes and 40 seconds per ride, and therefore travels at an approximate speed of 32 miles an hour. The freight train takes 33 minutes and 38 seconds to do its loop, traveling at an average speed of 53 miles an hour. The tram has a lot of stops along its route, and it takes 50 minutes and 2 seconds for a complete loop, meaning it travels at a measly 23 miles an hour. And at this speed, the tram takes 25 in-game hours to do one loop, which is a pretty shitty public transit system. And given this information, let's do one last jump back to the green screen. Now I'll make this quick because this video is dragging on. The worst train line, although one of my favorites, is the mineshaft. It's fun, but it's not really useful at all. In third, we have the tram. Sure, it's useful, but it doesn't have any good views and it just takes so God damn long. Second goes to the cable car. It's short, sweet, and sort of useful, but the views are amazing. Which means first is the freight train, which has the best views and is the most iconic in the game, being quote, unstoppable, end quote. And that's just not true. The train appears in 20 missions between story mode and online. And throughout those missions, we see the train stops about eight times. In the prologue, the train stops to block the player from traveling back to North Yankton. In armed trafficking error number four, you use the Cuban 800 to bomb the train, causing it to get destroyed and derailed. In derailed, two trains collide on the Rat and Canyon Bridge, meaning two trains stop at the same time. You can also see one train stop in the quarry during the mission sidetracked. In online, it stops in the ECU job, the first dose mission off the rails, and a few times in the Clock and Bell farm raid, which also allows us to drive the train for the first time in online, though it's already been done before in story mode in the mission derailed. But that is just in missions. Is it possible to stop the train in GTA free mode? And yes it is. Kind of. 
It stops once every time in its loop at the Palmer Taylor Power Station on the east side of the map. Although, aside from that, it is unfortunately not possible to stop the train. Nor is it possible to buy these 25 vehicles. And it's both for the same reason. Because Rockstar simply said no.